Hello guys, my name is Arun and welcome to my channel. This series is a series of tutorials on scientific computation using Python programming language. Now, in the last tutorial, uh, we, saw, uh, on how we saw some introduction as to how to install Python uh, how to install Python from Anaconda Python web, web page, how to in download it, how to install it, how to make sure that your Python Python and everything is working. Working. And we also saw the Python versions, why Python, and uh, the benefits you'll get when you finish this workshop, finish this course and all and everything. Now today, what we'll do is that we'll jump into the we'll jump into the um, We'll jump, we'll jump into session one wherein I'll be teaching you guys the basics of the Python programming language. I mean, not we, when just a reminder, we'll not be uh, I'll not be covering all of the topics. The Python, uh, even the basics of Python, are just too vast, and I'll be just covering some major important things that if you learn the bare I mean the bare essential minimums which will which you learn will be very useful for you guys. We'll be covering only those, but uh, if you guys uh, want to uh, learn more, you can just search other webs other sources and all. That will be good for you guys. Okay. Now with that, let's begin. Just a little preliminary settings. Okay. When, uh, as I told you guys earlier, when you go to Spider like this, okay, what you guys do is that go to Spider and go for this Tools option over here, and then go to Preferences. Okay. And then Preferences. Go to this IPython console. Okay. Here, go to Graphics. Here in Graphics. What you do is that uh, make sure that you uh, say make this option selected. Activate Python support. And if you guys want, okay, for scientific since uh, for advanced operations, make sure that you guys take uh, select this as well. Automatically load PyLab and NumPy modules. This is kind of necessary, okay. And then what you do is that uh, go below and in this graphics backend, set uh, if you are op check this out. There are four options inline automatic qt and tinker okay or kinter whichever you call it t, t silent doesn't matter set this to qt i mean even if you want you can set this to kinter it doesn't matter but any either one of the, you set either one of these what what it matters is that if you set it inline all the plots that you will get will be getting uh, okay i'll just move this a little away so that i'll give you guys a look see if you set this to inline what happens is that if you have any plots, okay, uh, that when you let's say you run a command and now uh, you have some plots and there's plots to show, and those plots will be embedded within this console, okay, that's the thing. Now, on the other hand, if you set it to automatic, based on the already existing conditions in the program or the commands, they'll either be embedded here or they'll be se displayed separately, okay. Qt and Kinter are used for making the v, uh, making the making the plots appear in a separate window. Qt is one uh, Python library. Kinter is another Python library. Both of them are GUI libraries. So it doesn't matter. So either in either one of them, you can just select either one of them. I go with Qt. That I just kind of tested. If you guys want, we can test the thing Kinter as well. I guess you'll get the similar results. Okay. Now set that and click apply. And then. What you have to do is that uh, go to this advanced settings over here, okay, and then make sure make sure this option uh, use this use the greedy computer option to be selected, okay. Once that is done, click okay, and that's about it. And then, as I told earlier, what uh, told earlier, uh, go to the console over here, press L, uh, press type pwd, and see whether your address of your uh, path over here and the path in your file explorer are the same if they are not the same what you do is that co uh, copy the path over here okay come to your console type cd and then paste your uh, path and press enter and then uh, press type pwd to check it and if you want to check the files available to click ls to see whether the files here and the in the file explorer are the same if this is done you you everything you are good to go and now and now if you want to have any guidance or anything okay you can you uh, if you want to find quick help or anything 
what you can do is that type something on the panel like numpy something and press question mark and press enter okay if you press question mark and press enter what you'll have is that uh, the documentation for this uh, thing uh, will be available over here will be available will be available in this object ex explorer the numpy is actually a library module i mean library or whichever you call it okay uh, it, it gives you an ex ex explanation as to what it is what it will do and everything what it will do and everything okay fine uh, nothing nothing more than that okay like also if you want if you have some queries like if you have some queries what you do is that just type whatever thing you have and then press ctrl i okay i guess that will have, that will work over here and everything so that's not a problem so you're good to go okay that's about it so if you have any th qu queries and if you want to uh, have a uh, access to our documentation inline type your command press question mark and enter you're good to go fine now let's get back to the presentation okay this is done yeah now this is this is a kind of a sample python program okay i made this uh, i just want uh, made this so that i just wanted to give you guys an ex explanation as to what it's what's going on over here now uh, maybe a typical python program will look something similar to this and if you notice there are like uh, several options over here like if you see this option this is a single line command whereas this option over here this option over here is actually a multi line command or a doc string like that okay now this program what it does is that this program is used for getting the factorial of a number okay so using in this statement over here in this statement over here i may telling the user to i'm telling the user to get to give a po enter a positive integer and then here i set uh, i set i set a value f to be 1 and then i check whether the value uh, value n is 1 or 0 if it's true uh, the the loop this condition statement is ex terminated otherwise if it's not 1 or 0 then i run this for loop from 2 to some n plus 1 value i mean but it literally ends to 1 it will literally run till n and then yeah, for every value it gets multiplied again and again and again and then finally the loop gets break, broken and then you are the the value of the number factorial is printed so if we enter like 5 this print statement will say something like the value of 5 factorial is 120 like that okay now let's break this down shall we let's break the program and look at all the features one by one okay now the first thing to look at is the comments now what are comments are that these are actually lines that are ignored in the program when the program is executed or run okay now Comments can be used for two things. One, uh, this can be used for ex used for excluding codes in the in the program. Let's say you have a large program and you want to experiment something by uh, experiment something by uh, uh, avoiding certain codes in the line codes in the line and all. Okay, if you want to do that kind of a thing, comments are used. And uh, so also, if you you can use comments to give some information. Let's say you're doing a program and uh, you just want to remind yourself or to uh, tell others that okay this is what I'm going to do in this part of the program this is what I'm going to do in the other part of the program and all if you want to do this kind of stuff okay comments are easy to, comments are actually a nice way to include messages like that just like a documentation for just for documentation purposes and in uh, Python the comments begin with the for single line comments begin with the keyword hash not keyword it's the symbol hash okay so if you go to spider you go to spider now what you do is that if you just type uh, hash okay automatically the, the, this is automatically this line becomes a comment okay this line becomes a comment fine now not only that there's other thing called dot strings now if you want to make a doc string what you need okay is you need a, a triple double quotes to begin with and a triple double quotes to end it otherwise you can also go with triple double triple single quotes to start and begin with now this 
is a dark string or the full form is document string now what is this used for is as follows if we have i mean this can be used as one uh, multi line comment two <coughs> two uh, documentation help documentation help now uh, just a little reminder now when I went over here and then I type numpy and I uh, just press the question mark and press enter the documentation was available over here okay now do you know where these information are being written these are actually written in between doc strings that's what they do so if you open the numpy module file and have a look at what's going on here all of the more or less all of these contents more or less all of these contents will be written inside the doc string of available doc string available in the in the numpy numpy file okay this way you are actually giving more precise information to to the user when they want to know about it so if you, so this way i mean this is the use of document string one multi line comment second giving a help regarding documentation so there are two types of doc i mean if you want to begin a documentation doc string you have two options begin with triple double quotes or begin with triple single quotes and end and end them end them with the same do not mix and match but end them with the same simple as that okay now let's go to some other options okay now uh we saw in the program that uh, that uh, this line if you want to give a input to the command into the program okay we need this command called as input now let's look at that a little elaborately now what this in input command is that it is used for getting the input from the user and assigns to a variable so the general procedure is some variable n okay equals variable should be on the left hand side and the function should be on the right hand side separated by the equal sign input okay something as and when you type your documentation will throw over here you'll just get an idea of what's going on and everything over here okay now what we can do is we can just type enter the value for n now what this will does is when you run the command okay uh, just print n as well okay if you run the, if you run this command what happens is that this string enter the value of n will be displayed in the console okay and the program will be waiting for you to give the answer for you, for you to give an input okay and then and then once once you give the input <coughs> once you give the input it will just take the value assign it to n assign it to n and then proceed with the next line of statement so to check how to do to do this what do you do what you can do is that since this is a simple program you can just uh, press run and if you guys can notice the con 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 console over here is waiting it just it just prints enter the value of n and it's waiting over there now what you do is just type give a value say let's say 5 and press enter and it prints 5 at the bottom and this 5 corresponds to this print statement this print statement is I mean we are giving the information print n meaning it's very telling the compiler to print the variable n and that's what is printed here and if you look at the object variable explorer okay 5 is an integer number so the 5 is taken and it is assigned to n as an integer okay like this now, now to note the, the thing to be noted is that this is a dynamic this is a dynamic input statement meaning based on the value of the value you give the data type of this variable n is assigned now we gave an input state we gave an integer statement here integer value here so the n turns out to be integer okay now let me run this again and this time let me give hello now this is a string now watch ha what happens 
okay sorry about that the, the, um, let's see I think I should give this in quotes yeah I should I, sh I should give this in quotes fine I forgot that yeah now what happens is that now when I give when I give hello here okay it takes the value and I make sure that the m is a string and then prints it again okay now if I run this again if you want to run this again now I will be give a value like 8.9 you press enter now the n becomes a float n becomes a float so what do you notice is what do you notice is that this input statement is a dynamic input wherein you can force the input whatever be the input you give you based on the data type of the input the value of the uh, data type of the output is variable is predetermined now what I do is that uh, let me comment this out okay no sorry let me uh, shift alt i i guess um, uh, con uh, alt shift i i i don't know okay fine there's actually a command i don't mind i'll just type it again now instead of input let me type there's another input called as raw input see i didn't if you press tab like it'll give you pro it'll give you the possible completions everything so it, it'll avoid you to save it'll kind of saves time for you okay uh enter the value or value for n now what i'm going to do is that let me comment this out thereby uh, excluding it now if i save this and run this check it out what happens now it says the enter value of n so let me give this as 8 and press enter it prints 8 ok nothing in, nothing special about it but what happens is that if you look at the variable value becomes a string that's funny by i entered 8 it should be an integer but it's string ok so let me enter uh, some other value this time uh, this time hello and press enter it's printed as hello no problem but it's still a string okay let me pr let me give a value like 8.9 which is supposed to be a float it's still a string so what raw output does okay so what raw output does is that it uh, it takes string by default it makes that it makes the variables to be string by default okay and then there is this one more option okay uh, let's say you want the value to be uh, predetermined i mean prefixed let's say you want all the value, value, values to be float and you don't want the, uh, any other options to happen what you can do is that you can type something like this value for n okay this is called as a typecasted typecasted input meaning whatever value enter over here initially they will get convert they initially they will be taken as a string and that string will be converted into a float okay so if I run this let me enter a value like 5 it prints 5 okay if you look at the file uh, variable explorer the value is 5 ok now I press up arrow to run this file again now let me give this value say 8.9 which is already a float it's still a float but the values change not a problem now this time I give a value like uh, ok now let me give a string this will throw an error watch because an already pr a, a number I mean uh, raw input though it gives out a string of string value uh, the value in the value in it is compared by the tire compared by the other function float over here to see what kind of input is being obtained now if that value is somewhat convertible into a float the value is converted if it's not it's not if it's not it will throw an array like this so hello is actually a pure string so it cannot be converted into a float so it throws an error whereas the numbers like 8.9 or 5 which are actually numbers which get converted into a string but 
though they are numbers this uh, with uh, though they are strings these numbers can be converted into proper floats so this done so uh, that can be done so that uh, in that case it didn't throw any errors then there's finally one more option nothing much what you do is that uh, you know uh, you can just like float of input okay float of input let's say I don't, I, let's, I, don't go, I don't have to give any string over here so if I just run you'll be just waiting we're just waiting so let me give a value like 5 that's it this way I don't know entering this is again a typecasted input but instead of the here instead of avoiding to be a string it just it just instead of converting into a string and then a float it just directly converts into that converts into a float directly it gets input converts them directly okay and then what we'll do is that we look at uh, <coughs> we look at the primary variables and pri primary variable types today primary variables type in this in this tutorial and then we'll we'll stop it here the next tutorial we look at the advanced op we look at the operators and all okay so let me go back to the presentation okay so we saw the sample program we saw about comments we saw about the input command okay in these data we looked at the primary variables we looked at input we looked at integer values float values and strings so there are actually little more of them okay uh, primary values there are like five standard primary data types like integer real uh, characters strings and uh, logicals okay but characters are but you don't have by you don't uh, you don't have by default a character uh, it's not a primary character, primary variable per se, but it's a part of a string, but it doesn't matter over here. You have like, sta you have like five standard uh, characters, char uh, variables, like variables. This is an integer, i is an integer, r is a float, c is a character, but or a single, uh, single length string, s is a string, and l is actually a logical, ca logical variable or a boolean variable. Integi uh, integers can, st integer variables can store only integers that is floats can store only floating values it can store integers as well not a problem characters and strings store symbols and symbols and ca special ca special symbols and characters logical statements uh, show, uh, store only true two val binary values like true or false okay and if you want to enter uh, strings in python you have to enter them in uh, double quotes or single quote double quotes or single quotes but you are allowed to mix and match single quotes and double quotes but that there should be a there should be a pattern like here if you look at this hello over here um this hello over here okay it's enclosed enclosed within double quotes so that's allowed this one this hello is enclosed within single quotes this again is allowed okay like even this is allowed okay and if you look at this center if you look at this string over here it is enclosed in double quotes but inside this string you have another string which is enclosed in single quotes this is allowed so what you have to do is if you start with a double quote in the, in the end of the string should end with a double uh, double quote okay but inside in, if you have a single quote inside it should be ended with a single quote before ending it so this if, though it's like that so you should not you know you should not break it you should not break it like that you should not mix and match you should not break it okay it's like remember this La first code to pay, first code to first code use should be the last code to end first code to start should be the last code to end like that okay similarly here i start with the single quotes finish with single quotes but in between you have double quotes suppose by it by you know uh, by some tr trouble if you have to include double quotes in between use a slash here this entire string is a proper string if you just want to include just a double code just for symbolic purposes just use a slash and that's it fine and that's about primary variables and little more detail uh, see primary variables are actually sorry not primary variables but basically variables in python are some kind of like objects are some kind of objects okay uh, because in python uh, the variables since the variables can have any data type okay it's not quite easy to comprehend what a variable is here so what uh, the Py architecture of python is defined in such a manner that any variable you create it's not actually per se a variable it's actually an object so that it can point to any data type quickly 
so all your data types are when you, whatever data type you give data you give they are actually stored in different parts of the memory memory and then the variable the or the, the uh, object which is actually your variable they will be when you give them an assignment or do something about it, when you assign them or link them up link them up they get linked to it so they'll be like pointing towards it so as a as a consequence of this these are ob- these are actually ob- pointers or objects in python these variables are actually objects in po- uh, pointers in python as a consequence you have an interesting advantage you can change the data type of a variable in python in, in at any instant dynamically you can just change it at any instant for instance if you look at this code over here don't worry this is actually a tested code if you guys want i can just copy all this content hope yeah it, it does copies nicely okay and then i print them i print them over here hopefully there isn't any error okay now if you want to just run a fragment of the code not everything just a fragment of the code copy all uh, select all of them right click and there is option called as run selection or current line and when you press click what happens is that all the code that you selected go co- gets copied to the console and it gets executed executed so what I, what do you have here is that what do you have here is that whatever data you input okay based on the data type the value ge- value of a gets modified value as well as the memory location and the type they are all getting modified for instance when a is 1.5 when you print a it is 1.5 the memory location id which is given by id is some is somewhere in 6 series and the value is a float 1.5 is the floating number so fine and now when when a is 5 when you print a okay i think there's a string on the left yeah when a is hello and if and i print it okay the string value gets printed it's hello and look if you look at the memory location it's modified and then look at this type it is string it's modified when a is 5 the value is 5 the memory location is modified and the type is mint it is again modified like that uh, when when you, when it's logical as well as set to true over here uh, it's true the memory location is modified it becomes a boolean like that you have other, other three more advanced data types like list tuple and dictionary when i set the values over here and i print them i print the starting address starting address using this int uh, id option and print the type as well they get printed as list tuple and dictionary uh, correspondingly so what you have to be aware of, aware here is that variables in python are not per se in natural technical sense variables these are actually some kind of objects or pointers which can which point to memory locations and access those da- the access those data variables act as just uh, pointers that access da- memory location and that's it nothing more nothing less so as a consequence you can change the data types change the data type of any variable at any point of the t- any point in the program now this is particularly interesting because this kind of feature is not available in other programming languages so this is an advantage of python if you want um, you can use this uh, you can use this in as per your jo- as per your wish well when when it comes to certain applications this this kind of comes in handy now uh, that's all i have for you guys in this tutorial now in the next tutorial what we'll see that we look at operators list tuples and a uh, little about mutation and little more advanced concepts okay thank you guys for watching and i'll see you guys in next tutorial then